we're back dr. Shelley with he TV this is part two video for basics of digestion the first video we got all the way to the pancreas now I told you the pancreas was gangsta we still on the pancreas we talked about insulin we handled that business now we need to talk about something else with this pancreas this pancreas will secrete lipase so don't forget what you did you went to McDonald's you got a burger fries you got you a pie you got you a shake you were thirsty so you even got a pop and then you added because you was on some BS a Danish to you know get you through the night or day or whatever you're doing so because you ate all that we had to digest it and we said that you took that bite of that burger and you sent it through the body and you started with the mouth and you masticated with the 32 teeth and you did all that stuff right well now we ended up at the point where we are in the small intestine and we just finished messaging the gallbladder the liver as well as the pancreas because the duodenum the gallbladder, the liver, and the pancreas, they all shared the common bile duct. And so when these messages went out to these accessory organs from the duodenum, everybody kicked into place. So the liver produces the bile, the gallbladder stores and secretes the bile. It sent the bile down with a contraction of the gallbladder, sent the bile down to take care of the fat, melt it up so you can absorb it better. The, the pancreas, went on ahead and did its job, and it also uses the common bile duct. It secreted insulin, made sure that you understood that the insulin was so that you could take whatever sugar you ate, and you ate a lot, because remember, you ate a complex carb called fries. You ate simple carbs called a shake, a pop, and a danish, and a pat. You ate all of that, and insulin was busy. Insulin had to make sure it takes it out of the blood and puts it where it goes where does it go it goes in the muscle so you have energy where else does it go it goes in the liver so you can use it tonight when you're not eating where else does it go where well, you ate so much and i mean you ate so much that it went to your stomach which has unlimited storage ability it can store as much sugar as you send it and it's a good reason because it was supposed to take care of you in times of starvation needless to say we're not starving so it's not taking care of you. Instead, the belly is getting bigger and putting pressure on your heart, your liver, and your other organs causing heart attacks. Just saying. Now, so as we move ahead to our pancreas and finish up the pancreatic activities, remember I said that the pancreas secretes lipase. And if you just look at the word, because you do have to do some looking up in here. I told you earlier when you had that amylase that anything ending in ASE was an enzyme. Well, this is an enzyme that helps you secrete, or not secrete, but helps you digest fat. How are you gonna remember that? Lipase, liposuction, lipids. Y'all with me? Lipase, liposuction, lipids, all of that is fat. Okay, so this is what the pancreas puts out, and that's going to be important later when we talk about acute GI and a patient gets pancreatitis. Because if you get pancreatitis, you cannot digest fat, and you are going to have problems later down the road with diabetes because you won't do well with producing insulin. Because again, that's the pancreas. Okay, so pancreatitis, you feeling me? All right, so we're going to keep it moving because the pancreas is done. It's gangster, but it's done. It had a lot to do, but it's done. Now remember where we were. We were in the duodenum, the small intestine, in fact the top part of the small intestine. And 80 to 90 percent of all nutrients are absorbed in the duodenum. Now the jejunum helps, which was the middle part of your small intestine, and the ileum helps. But for the most part, most of the absorption is done in the duodenum. Now, our issue with this duodenum is once you have this amazing, nutritious, big, huge mm, container, I would say, of, of just nutritious blood with all these vitamins and minerals in it, and well, maybe not because you did go to McDonald's, but you know, whatever, maybe we got something out of it. I mean, you know, there's a tomato, maybe there was an onion, something on that daggone burger that helped us. Okay. Now, once you get done with all of this nutritious blood, 
the small intestine is going to take two trips. It's going to go two different ways with all of this crap that you ate. It's going to take the nutritious part of the blood and it's going to send it through and watch my hands. The duodenum is going to send it through the portal vein. The portal vein connects the small intestine with the liver and it's going to send that nutritious blood up to the liver. Now, why is it sending it to the liver? Well, remember I said portal vein, and then you have to connect dots to the cardio videos that are also in HETV, because the cardio videos told you, every time I say vein, it means that eventually blood will end up in the heart on the right side. So what the heart and the liver have managed to do is have a contract. The heart is bougie. The heart is uppity. The heart is Pepper Pike. And Pepper Pike, the heart, told Cleveland Heights, listen, don't send me no crazy blood, dirty blood, toxic blood. Don't send that up here to me. We keep it nice and clean and cool and collected up here. The liver understands he kind of got offended. Well, we got it clean and cool and calm and collected too up in the heights. So I'm right. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. But you know, you hurt my feelings a little bit, but it's cool. We got you. So what my job is as the liver, as I understand it, before I send you this blood through the vein, is to clean it up. Well, in this case, you, you know, the McDonald's shopper, you went to McDonald's and ate all this other kind of garbage. Well, you know, you worked hard today. Mm hmm you did. And you had a test in school today. Mm hmm you did. And you passed that test with one point. Mm hmm you did. And that test was a final, so you feeling yourself, ain't you? Yeah, you feeling yourself. You know how much you feeling yourself? Your ass just had to go out and celebrate. You and your friends went kicking it in the flats. You drank a little bit too much, and then you was real out of control. You and your friend did a couple lines of cocaine. Mm -hmm. And then after that, because you on some bull crap, you had to actually go to work the next day, so you tried to figure out how to come down. So you decided to go ahead and knock out some benzos. What's benzos, Shelly? Oh, you know what benzos is. Add a vans and X. You know what benzos is? That's the stuff they're always rapping about and their little songs y'all listen to. Yeah, benzos. You decided to come down off your cocaine high with some benzos. Then you woke up to a headache. Wonder why? Because you done got drunk like crazy the night before. So you took your little Motrin. Mm. Your liver has got its work cut out for it. Because that so-called McDonald's meal and that nutritious blood, which included maybe a tomato, all of that blood has to be sent through the liver so the liver can detox all this blood before it sends it up to the heart. It's got to take that Motrin out of there. It's got to get those benzos from that blood. It's got to take that freaking cocaine for sure. But what's the highest priority for the liver? Because you're going to kill the liver if it doesn't do it. The alcohol that you drink. As a matter of fact, it's such a big deal that we get the alcohol out of this blood before we send it to the heart that the liver won't do anything until it removes the alcohol. Because it won't do anything until it removes the alcohol, sometimes what you ate that had a little sugar in it, it can't even store it for tonight because it's preoccupied with the alcohol. But at least, at the very least, you must know this because this is huge. If you're going to drink, make sure you eat because if you just sent it straight alcohol, then it would have never stored anything in terms of sugar and glycogen and the glycogen stores that you're supposed to use tonight it wouldn't even be there so you would crash and that's what most car accidents are from after getting drunk it's not from the alcohol it's from the sugar hitting a very deep dirty or below your sugar probably is about 40 when you got in that car accident because the liver can't do two things at once and it prioritizes taking alcohol out of the blood instead of storing sugar in the liver now that's a sad note because that's gonna hit you later when I talk about cirrhosis okay now so we good we got our liver we got our small intestine. We sent some nutritious blood to the liver so it can prepare it for the heart. Once it's done, the liver is going to send that blood, that nutritious blood, up the hepatic vein to the heart. Then the vein that it's going to go through is the superior vena cava on into the right side. 
The liver is also going to take some of the, 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 the food that you ate, especially the fat and the protein, and it's going to make something called albumin. It's going to send albumin into your blood vessels to keep fluid inside those blood vessels and to make sure that the albumin is there whenever you get an infection because it can help make antibodies. The liver is also going to develop clotting factors, especially things like vitamin K and prothrombin and all that good stuff, so that it helps your blood clot in terms of an accident. The liver has a lot of functions. I don't need to go on and on. You got it. Now, in addition to the duodenum, the jejunum, the, the ileum, sending all of this nutritious blood to the liver, it also has a lot of waste products. Oh my goodness, you didn't think that that nasty, ridiculous meal that you bought at McDonald's had some waste products? <laughs> yes, it did. So what does it do now with the waste product? Well, the ileum has to send all of this waste product to the large intestine. And this is where things get a little hairy. So watch my hands. The ileum is on your right side. It connects to your ascending colon. Now, don't forget what I taught you. Every time I say colon, I mean large intestine. So it connects to the large intestine. So that's how the small and the large connect on the right side. Once it connects, you have something called an ascending, which means going up, and a transverse, which means going across, and a descending part of your large intestine. That's important because it takes that long to absorb water, sodium, bilirubin, and bile in order to make stool and keep you hydrated. So your large intestine needs to absorb the water that you drink. It needs to take in some of the sodium. It uses the leftover bile and bilirubin to give color to the stool. And then, of course, in that descending colon, you head right into what we call the sigmoid colon. And that might ring a bell because we did glass earlier and sigmoid was shit. Okay, good. Now, what happens then? Well, the poop, the shit, the whatever you want to call it, is stored in the rectum and evacuated through the anus. And you have completed your digestion. So hopefully you understood that this was a two-part video. And part one did the top part of the body. And then part two kind of took care of the bottom part of the body. And so it's such an exquisite way that we digest food. Can't be nobody but God that did it. So you have to understand it. Now, everything I did, I got a news flash for you. Everything I did today is on the front page of your packet and I want to hook you up so stay with me I'm going to show you what numbers to put on everything now mine is not going to be able to be read very well but I'm still going to show it to you so that you can see that there are numbers on all of my stuff okay so I'm going to tell you how to number this so you get the order right if you go to the mouth you put a one you go to salivary glands you put a two your three is across the page on the other side at parotid glands. Your number four is underneath that at upper esophageal sphincter. If you go over to the other side of the paper, that's your full esophagus. That's it's a five. Once you're done with the esophagus, you go to the lower esophageal segment that I told you could be weakened and give you reflux, and you put a six. After that, you're going to go way over there to the stomach, and that was called to the left, to the left, Beyonce. And so you're down there to the stomach, right up under there, and you put a seven. When you get done with that stomach, you're going to go across the paper to the pyloric sphincter and put an eight. After you're done with putting an eight on the pyloric sphincter, you probably knew this one, but I'm going to tell you anyway. You go right up under there to the duodenum and put a nine. And then you have a bit of fun. You have these organs I told you were called accessory organs, the gang. You have to put a 10 
by the pancreas on the other side of the paper. You have to put a 10 on the gallbladder on the other side of the paper because these things are happening at the same time. And then you put an 11 on the liver, which is above the gallbladder. You'll see it on the paper, okay? Now, after you put that 11 on that liver, you've got to come way back over here on the other side of the paper and put a 12 near the jejunum. You put a 13 on the ileum. After doing that 13 on the ileum, you remember, we got to go way back over on the other side of the paper and hit the ascending colon. That's 14. 15 is going to be the transverse colon, if you'll remember. 16 is going to be the descending colon, if you remember. Your 17, if you look where 16 is and you're thinking about 17, you've got to create it. Why? Because there is no label, and I'm just going to put my little fingers there, there's no label for the rectum, and so you've got to write it. All right, now that is number 17. The last thing you want to write is 18 by the anus, and you're good to go. That's digestion. All right, so don't say I didn't tell you. Bye.